Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. Now, um, this could end up being a bumper episode because there is a shitload of stuff to discuss. I figured we'd start off on the page of Pat Curtin, since I don't often show defenders, just so you can sort of see how he's developing. Lovely, resolute personality. Potential ability clearly has sort of a, well, not fallen. I just think that other players have grown faster than he has, and we're sort of reaching their limitations in some respects. Right, so firstly, you'll probably want to know who we're playing in the Champions League, and I will get to that in just a second. Hopefully it doesn't spoil it on this screen. Uh, we've also got a couple of games that we've played off camera, one before Christmas and a couple afterwards, and there's been some transfers in, and most importantly, a few transfers out. Um, it has been probably the busiest January transfer window I've ever had on this save. So first, let's talk about the games we've played, then we'll talk about who we're playing, and then we'll talk about the transfers. So just after our Champions League game, we had that game against FC Copenhagen in the league, and I just wanted to avoid losing, and that's exactly what we did. It was a humdinger, though. We went in front, they turned it around, and they went in front. We then turned it around, and we went in front, and then they equalised in the 91st minute through Kent Ports, an absolute classic for the ages. Svenningsen and Fagner doing a brilliant job, Svenning off the bench, of course. Uh, got man of the match off the bench, because of course he did. Or did he, actually? I can't remember. I think he might have started this game. I, I can't remember what squad I played. Anyway, a good point. In our first game back after Christmas, we were away to Norgeland, and it was a fairly straightforward kind of game. Uh, I think 3-0 might flatter us a little bit. Goals from Akinola, Bravo, and a late one from Juan Shishi. But annoyingly, Sani Akinola picked up his second injury of the season, which is a bit of an annoyance, uh, unfortunately. We only took nine fans to this game, but another win. And in our final game that we played along this little section, we had a home game against Orborg. A very comfortable win again. Two back-to-back 3-0s -back to start off the second half of the season is joyous. Two goals for Medi Kuja, uh, one of the new lads I showed you that was going to come in. Obviously, he's now signed. Mind. mostly a b-team kind of player for us at the moment but he's still clearly got some chops and he demonstrated that on the night with bravo grabbing a third to cap things off nicely fc copenhagen have also reached the knockout stages of the europa league which is really really cool to see so there's a chance that they might get even more coefficient points for us and now what you're wondering is who did we get well we got Spurs. We're playing against Spurs in today's episode. A couple of games against Spurs should be very, very difficult in all honesty, but we're going to give it our best shot. The league is currently looking like this. We are eight points clear of FC Copenhagen, and they are a further 10 points clear of third place Midland now. Um, so we're 18 points above third place already. It's once again a two-horse race, but even in that sense, we're still pulling away as the main horsey in the race. Right, other business, and there's been quite a few things before we come to transfers and then the two Spurs games, and there's like four league games in between. I don't know how I'm going to keep this under half an hour. So I've upgraded the data analysis yet again. They're doing this quite quickly. It cost us 1.8 million this time. So it is starting to get to the expensive stages of it. But I figured one more couldn't hurt. We're going to keep upgrading as far as we can. Next, the board let me have a brand new affiliate. And we were able to get 1860 Munich as our affiliate club, uh, which means we get first dibs on their players, which is very tasty. And some other little bits and bobs every now and then. But they're still stranded in the third tier of German football and have been for the entirety of this save, as far as I can see. Uh, so there's that. And and I thought it was just cool to be able to get this sort of club as a new affiliate. We did have loads of awards. I didn't win manager of the season. Svenny won a load of awards as well. Omoa got goalkeeper of the year. Svenningsen was also the main striker in the Danish team of the year, which includes all Danish players, which is a massive achievement for him. And if he doesn't start getting more Danish call-ups, I'm going to be having words. And Kosi Malamdowitz finally has joined us. Uh, a decent looking player all round. And believe me, his importance is very much needed at this point. You might notice he's got a brief little loan spell here at Osterson as well. That's because they were prepared to pay us something like £300,000 to loan him for the year. And I originally agreed, but then some other other things conspired and I had to recall it from loan on the day of the last day of the transfer window because uh, otherwise we'd have been a bit short at the back and you'll see why in a minute. Andre Cunha also joined us and he looks like an absolute prospect on that right hand side. Unfortunately, he does have a calf strain and is going to be out for a few weeks now, which is a real pain in the ass. But there you go. We've had quite a few injuries as well. And of course, Medi Cunha has also joined us sort of level in fact with bravo in a lot of areas and he's a complete forward so he's got a few little extra bits and bobs still only 20 years old i think a decent enough striker for us at the moment gives us a little bit more depth in there too with yakim and fagner lots of options up front so the first player to go out is Johnny Ia. Unfortunately, he has left the club. He started complaining about getting no first team football yet again, even though he's played loads. And he wouldn't listen to the whole atmosphere thing, so we just had to move him on. Randers have paid us £275,000 for a player that we got for free, though. So I'm not really too fussed, to be honest. It's a shame, but I wasn't going to have players upset in the atmosphere of the squad. It's very important for us to do that, and we've cashed in for some cash. Fernando Castaneda has also gone out to Torino for £350,000, which is one I didn't really see coming. Um, I didn't really think he'd do that well for us but there you go 350k and a 50% of next sale fee clause couldn't really argue with that a little bit more cash for us down the line this one bothers me a little bit Jonas Simeon he only signed in the summer but he started complaining about getting no first team football despite the fact that he was like a hot prospect here or something so wouldn't have been expected to he refused to go out on loan um 
And yeah, so eventually he just asked to leave and I could do nothing about it once again, which is a pain in the ass uh, yet again. However, we did get £875,000, uh, rising, I think, to just over a million from FC Copenhagen for the lad. It's a bit of a pain, but we've doubled our money in the space of six months. So I can't be too annoyed at that. And we've got a 50% of next sale fee clause. And more importantly, we're selling him to another Danish side. So that's going to hopefully strengthen them overall. So I'm not too bothered. It's just a bit of a bummer, really, because I had big plans for the lad. But probably the biggest out, which is one I did not expect, is Fabian. Fabiano Cravinos. He, again, has only really been here about six months. And honestly, he's not performed well. Looking at his actual performances... Oh, that's for Arsenal, isn't it? Point is, he did not play well for us in the games that he played. He was almost one of our worst performing defenders. I don't know exactly why, but I wasn't too bothered when he said he wanted to leave. And again, the atmosphere thing seemed to stop working a little bit over this period. And I was getting very worried that someone like Svenningson or someone would ask to leave. But thankfully, that was all taken care of before all this happened. So Cravinos has left to join Arsenal. 1.4 million up front. And it can rise to as high as 2.2 million with a 50% of next sale fee clause. So good money in the deal, really, for a player. Once again, we got for free. But that's because this is why I had to recall Malamdowitz, because we'd lost um, players in key areas, really. Right, I tried to get through as much of that as quickly as I possibly could. But I really did want to give the proper details on stuff like that. I'm thinking for FM19, I might move back to six videos a week. Um, they'd be slightly shorter, sort of around the 15 to 17 minutes mark. But you'd still get more overall. And that's kind of what I want to do. Because the stuff I'm cutting out that I don't really want to have to, and I wouldn't need to then and you'd get more content so there's that before today we're at home against spurs we got the home leg first which i'm not too bothered about i would have rather played it last uh, so we kind of knew what we had to do but in all honesty i, I think we're going to struggle against spurs if we've got any hope we need to get a win at home and to be fair i don't think we've ever actually lost at home in europe uh, or did we lose to Valencia? Uh, actually, let me know. Have we ever lost a home game in Europe at all? I've adjusted these a little bit. Akinola, unfortunately, is still out injured, as is Keradine Chowie. We picked up three injuries in our first friendly, and it's annoying because I've been rotating the squad through the different strings in the friendlies to figure we'd get less injuries, but it actually ended up costing us more injuries. Pain in the ass again. So Johansson... Oh, oh that's another mistake I also made. I auto-registered players for the next round of the Champions League, and for some reason, it didn't add any of the new boys at all, even though there was loads of room in the squad. So that's totally my fault. Thankfully, they all agreed to shut up about it, but that is a pain in the bottom, as it means that Cunha couldn't play either, even though he's injured anyway. Moskutsa will come in here. Johansson can't play because of the annoying registration issue, so uh, Santi... Santi... Santi Santos. Sergio Santos will play. Uh, and Shishi will, of course, move back to his normal attacking strategy here with Zayem, Rogers Jr., Leiva, Rocco, Curtin, and Demoa. Although maybe Malamdowitz, uh, mm, no, we'll, we'll leave him as an option off the bench for now. On the bench, Niang, Seifi, Surgod, Fagner, Malamdowitz, uh, Tavares, and Yakim. Lots more options, though, which is nice to have. Right, so opposition rule. Oh, hello! They're doing a 4-4-2. Harry Kane is still there, up top with Sidney Cristiano. Okay, so we mark up Dominguez um, and kind of just play it by ear from there. We're good against teams with a 4-4-2. We could actually hold some possession against Spurs. This could be interesting, you know. Okay, so we've marked up Dominguez. Let's just get this show on the road, I suppose. There's not really much we can do from this point. So, question of the day. And the question of today is this. Have you ever skipped anything important in life to play FM? Honestly, no. Um, I've never managed to find myself in that position. The only I, th I think I've pulled an all-nighter nearly one time, and that was back in, like, uh, 2014, playing my Uni Alden Madeira save. The first save I ever really, really got massively into on FM. I really want to revisit that at some point as well, actually, if I get the chance. Leiva could make a breakaway for us here, but Cristiano's stronger. But yeah, have you? what have you skipped uh, to play FM? What did you find yourself in that position? Let me know in the comments, and if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Harry Kane, saved by Amoa. This is going to be tough, of course. Um, but 4-4-2s, four, four we, we look strong against them most of the time, but it is a very different 4-4-2 four, because four, it's Spurs. Bravo, and he's wasted that opportunity massively. Give it a crack. At this point, it's basically a free hit. We weren't expecting to get to this stage. We have. Let's give it a crack. Santos, bravo. Can he find Svenningson? Svenningson's through. Oh, and Kelly makes the save, and that's our first shot on target. Tell you what, we're not looking too bad. Um, defensively, we're looking solid. We're having a few shots on target. It's nice. I feel like we could actually nick something in this game. Fortress Greenland really is starting to become a thing. Rogers Jr. Ball in. Bravo's header and it's saved by Kelly. This is not bad. The question is, what do we do in the second half? Do we kind of keep things going how they are or do we try to go for the win? I just worry about us opening ourselves up too much in the second period. Like, if we got a nil-nil, I wouldn't be overly fussed. Although we generally do struggle away from home in Europe anyway. Svenningson. Zayem. Here we go. Well, scoots are gone. Ball in. Needed now. Oh, edge of the box for Santos. And that's an easy one over the bar. Okay, so half time. Uh, fairly even. They're getting a little bit more of the ball, but we're doing all right, frankly, having some chances. Lots of cross completion. Uh, then again, we're not getting a lot of crosses in. I do wonder if pushing our wing backs forward a little bit might not be a bad idea. I, I kind of feel like we could maybe get something from this game. I'm tempted to go for it. Give these guys something a little bit more to do and also look for the overlap in this second half. 
Um, I don't really go on counter because I don't really want to play that way against a 4-4-2 style of system. I think we're all right. We're not surrendering too much possession to Spurs, really. Only sort of a 3% margin, really. Uh, well, 6%, really. Yeah, I think some striking substitutions. Maybe someone like Fagner, who's got that... Oh, what a save again from Amoa, who's got that extra bit of height. Uh, might be an option for us. And Kuja isn't particularly small either, I don't think. It's also just occurred to me that Spurs have had nine shots, but eight of them have come from range. I think there's a real chance for us in this match now. Spending his ball in. Bravo! Santos round the post. Okay, now it's starting to build. I feel like this second half's got a goal in it for us. Uh, we're going to make a substitution now while I'm thinking about this. Uh, Svenningson's actually playing better, so we'll get Bravo off for Fagner. Uh, Santos is having a very poor game, but uh, then again, maybe we could try Hill Tavares up here. It's an unusual idea. sam has been good. Rogers Jr. has been poor, but we've got so few options in those areas because of the injuries to Cunha and Chowy. Um, Curtin's not had the best game. I might even get Malamdowitz in for a little bit. We've been the better side, particularly in the second half. It's been all B67. Tavares. The little changes at half time do seem to have made a difference. Fagner. Tavares. He doesn't like to shoot from range. That's better. Moskutsa. Go on. Ah. Oh, Tavares. I just want a good ball in from someone. Svenningson. Go on. Use Rogers Jr. This is the perfect moment for him. Ball in. And Moskutsa is there. And Kelly has the save again. I just don't want to go on to attack or anything because I just feel like if we did that, we might end up conceding a goal. And if we lose the, first, the home leg 1-0, th this tie is completely over. At least at 0-0, there's still the faintest hope we could get the away goal or something and snatch a draw there and actually go through via it. You know, it gives us a chance. It's not the end of the world. Svenningson. Oh, can he find a cross? Moskutsa's ball in. Fagner! Sheesh! He round the post. And my goodness, we should be winning this game. You know what? Final 10 minutes. We're going to go attacking. If it bites us in the arse, it does. But I just feel like we've got something in this game and we just can't quite get it. I also might go hit early crosses um, because we've still got an incredibly good cross completion and lumping a few into the box for the next sort of five minutes of this match. We might be able to steal something through Fagner and with his aerial prowess, although it's looking less likely by the second now. And yeah, I think this is going to be a nil-nil, uh, which is such a shame. We've played... Oh, that's frustrating. We, we played well enough to win that match. Um, Amoa was actually man of the match somehow, uh, even though he only would have made three saves, I guess. Uh, weird. But there you go. I, I thought someone like Rogers Jr., who actually did really well in the second half, possibly could have won it. But there you go. Nil-nil. I think it's going to be such a tough ask in the second leg, but you never know. If we can go to Spurs and score, that gives us a chance. Right, we've got some games in between to now discuss and do. Uh, so let's do that now. Right, I don't normally do this, but since this happened during me actually recording and stuff, I think we'd cut back and take a look at the youth intake briefly. Um, lots of players here actually aren't from Nuke. Uh, you notice there's a few from like Birkholm, uh, Hillerud, uh, Lingby. So we're getting a bit of a wider net, which is good. Um, I haven't looked at it yet. It says we've got every reason to be excited by David Svensson. So that's good. Uh, notable influence on bringing through Lucas Borg and Simon Frost. Right, let, let's grab, let's have a gander. There we go, reports. Um, so Svensson is the best. Um, he's not magic or anything. He he is at least there, though. He's a, oh, he's a defensive midfielder, which is something uh, we'll talk about when we come back properly. Uh, he's an honest defensive midfielder. Low determination. Um, I think with the right tutoring, we could certainly maybe get something out of David Svensson, but I think he's probably our best bet. Nothing amazing in the youth intake this year, which is a bit of a shame, but there you go. Right, so we've had like four league games off camera. It's been nearly a month in between the two Spurs games. So I've been sitting here for a while. The first of which was at home against Odense, and I tried something out that someone suggested in the comments, and it worked quite nicely. And what I tried was they said basically you really, really need one more centre-back than the other team has strikers. And this team played the old Marion list system with no real... They had an isolated striker. So what I did was I moved the central mid, uh, the central defender, the tiny one in the middle, uh, up into... as a, Like I used to do. And I played um, Zayem in that role, basically. And we were dominant in this game. At one point, we had 76% possession. Uh, in the second half, it kind of ground down a little bit, particularly when we went down to 10 men after Wagner's injury. He scored a hat-trick and now has broken his foot and it's going to be out for five months. So I've sent him to a specialist, but that's the best we could do. Not a good season for him, unfortunately. But a fantastic performance on the night. They scored with their only shot on target, of course. Uh, hat-trick for Wagner and a wonderful long ranger from Peter Sorgord. Brilliant win. We then travelled away to Lingby in a pretty tough game, really. But to be honest, on the night, I don't think the game should have been anywhere near as close as it was. Uh, Svenningson's hat-trick was very, very useful for us. We played some of the first teams in these games. Sorensen and Urschan did get goals for Lingby, though, as they're still definitely going to be a good side in the championship group. But we got our win, which is good, because obviously Copenhagen have been smashing teams. We had to grind things out a little bit against Bromby. We didn't play great on the night. Still created a lot of chances, though. It took until the 86th minute when a deflected shot from Carl Rogers Jr. hit the post uh, after the goalkeeper and then came 
came back to Bravo, who slotted it home. The anti Johansson injury has left us in a bit of a problem because we now have um, only one fit attacking midfielder with both Akinola and Johansson out. So Santos has been getting a lot of game time. And we made it four wins out of four with a win away at Esbia. Two goals from Mark Yakim on the night. A thoroughly decent performance again. Great work. Rogers Jr. with two assists as well. Yakim has now got 11 goals in the league. I believe he is actually our top league goal scorer at the moment, which is very, very impressive. 11 goals in 14 games for him. He's really holding down the fort. And all that has the league looking like this. We are still eight points clear of FC Copenhagen. They've now moved 15 points clear of Lingby. I think they've won all four games off camera as well. Their goal difference has shot up. Um, they are still hunting us down. I have to say they are keeping their, keeping their end of the bargain and keeping it very, very close. That's all I can really say about that, really. But why we're really here is this game, away at Spurs. We're going to do our best today. We got a nil-nil in the first leg, which gives us hope. If we can find an away goal and snatch a draw, we are through no matter what. If we get a score draw, we're through. It's very, very unlikely though, isn't it? So the first string for today's game, Bravo, Svenningsen, obviously Akinola can't play, but Santos will slot in there nicely. Shishi, obviously we'll move him back over, still haven't got around to doing that. Um, Zayem, Rogers Jr., Chowie, Leva, Rocco, Curtin, and Amoa. You might notice I've switched the tactics around a little bit, so we actually have names for the different tactics now. This I've just called the Ice Pick. Uh, we've also got the counter-attacking version of that with some other stuff turned on, so the team are actually learning it. And then the Frozen Hug of Death, which is what I tried against Odense, and it worked delightfully. But it only really works if that team has one striker, specifically. Not if, with the wingers pushed up, I don't want to try it because they get too much space, but if they've got one lone striker and nothing else. This seems to work very nicely. And on the bench, Niang, Moskutsa, Malamdowitz, Yakim, uh, Seifi, Tavares, and Peter Surgord. Um, strong looking bench, strong looking team. Let's have this. See what they're going to do. So, um, two inside forwards in this one. It's very much a case of everyone pushing at us, essentially. Uh, we're going to mark up Dominguez, of course, the inside forwards as well, and Cristiano. Harry Kane is not starting this one, interestingly. Um, it's going to be crazy difficult, um, but we're going to do our best. Thinking about that, I might actually start us off on counter me in because we're going to be playing counter-attacking football anyway. We might as well start off like it for once. Right then. I mean, it really much, it pretty much is all on the line in this game. If we can somehow avoid defeat in London, um, then there's a really good chance. I mean, a nil-nil wouldn't make any difference. That would just take us to extra time and whatnot. I, I just can't see us pulling it off here. Um, but you never know. You, you just never know. Gabriel Jesus with the with the free kick headed away. Right, Chowie, come on. Long ball down the field. Somebody needs to... Svenningson's dawdling a little bit. You just didn't make the run quick enough, Svenny. Dominguez. Amoa, why is he kicking it long? There's no reason to do that. Lever, headed away. Jesus. Oh, Cristiano's already through. And he's already scored. I don't understand why my goalkeeper is booting it long. I have the instruction to distribute to the fullbacks and pass it shorter. All five of those players were available for a pass. So why did he then just lump it randomly into the midfield? It just didn't make any sense. I have no target men. Sidney Cristiano, great finish for Spurs. And it's already 1-0. Uh, uh. Spurs are dominating possession. Let's see if I'm up. Right, that, why didn't he just do that on the first play? It made no sense to me. Chowy, go on, Svenningson into the channel. Here we go. Bravo's going to need to do some magic if he can get on the end of this. Ball in. Oh, God, Mariano. What a chance that was. That should have been 1-1. Take it away. We've not made a good job of possession today. No, I would agree. Um, But it is Spurs, and we are playing a very counter-attacking style. And it's, It was always going to be difficult. He's already through. Dominguez, I want to see some long shots. Oh, good save from Momoa. We'll save ourselves for the second half. I don't want to go throwing it on attacking just yet, when all we really need is a goal. And if we were to get one, that's all we'd need. We're actually completing quite a lot of the crosses from the small amount of them that we've actually managed to get. Something might be worth looking at in the second half of this game. We're still looking very good from crosses. Oh, hello. Wait, why have we... No, he got the... It looked like Curtin got the ball there, but all right, okay. Fair enough. He has been sent off one. Oh, no. Well, that, that's game set and match now, isn't it, Pat Curtin? I thought he won the ball. It's hard to tell. Uh, the animation looked like it did, but there you go. It's 1-0 to Spurs, and we're now down to 10 men. I think this game is over at this point. Um, obviously, we'll move him across. And I might switch Lever actually over to cover, just so we've got a stopper and cover kind of system here. But I think that's done. I was going to push someone into midfield for the second half, but uh, I think Pat Curtin's just cost us and knocked us out of the Champions League there. Um, we were still kind of in the game in places, but that that's that's done. That's done. That's us done. Rogers Jr. But the longer it stays 1-1, the more of a little tiny sneak of a chance we've got. Uh, nearly. Kelly looking long. Cut out well by Lever. That's good stuff from him. Zayem. Into the channel. Bravo could maybe get there, you know. Oh, I thought we might have won a penalty or something. That would have been quite something. Uh, into the channel again, right? That's better. Picking the ball up in good position. Santos. Bravo. Svenningson takes a touch. That was the chance. Okay, who's played badly and who... Well, we, Santos has played poorly, but we have no options to bring into that position at all. Apart from Hill Tavares. You know what? Screw it. At this point, we might as well. Um, Rocco's not been excellent either. Maybe Malamdowitz? 
try and freshen up the defenders a little bit. I'd love to be able to push uh, someone from midfield into... Oh, there it is. There's the goal for Spurs to make it 2-0 on the night. I mean, they've deserved it. They've been the better side. But we're down to 10 men. We've given it our best shot. Um, God. If Curtin hadn't got sent off, we might have had a chance here. It's hit the post and come... I think it hit the post and came back to Cristiano. Very fortunate, but there's so much space through the middle. Cristiano's through again, and it's now 3-0 to Spurs, and that is game over now. We are donezos. Um, I might just stick it back on counter for the rest of the game. I don't want to embarrass ourselves. We're 3-0 down now. They've scored two in two minutes. We're playing against Spurs with 10 men. We'd struggle against this lot with 11 men. Um, our chance in this tie was the first leg. Cristiano just edge of the box. Whack. This guy's quality. We're just going to have to try and see out the rest of this game. Now, they've just brought on a striker called John Ing They've got Johnny English. Um, what more do you need, really? Yakim's going to come on for Svenningsen to finish things off in this game, just sort of see out the rest of it. Um, but yeah, the, the third goal's really, really killed us. I mean, we were already kind of dead before then. Yakim's through already, and he's got one back. I mean, th the chances of us actually managing to score two more in the next 20 minutes are infinitesimally small. But at least we're giving it a go, and Mark Yakim's got himself a goal in the Champions League with 19 minutes to go. At least we've scored in the tie. That's the main thing. Zayem's ball. Tavares does a brilliant job of holding it up. And Yakim in great position again. Another goal for him this year. He's probably going to get to like 25 in all competitions, which ain't bad, you know. Because we got the goal that we needed. We just had that one little tiny bad spell. And Lever's header now against the goalkeeper. Ah, on another day, maybe. But I, I don't think so. Maybe if we hadn't had the red card. If, without the red card, there might have been a chance for us in the second half of this game. But Pat Curtin's royally screwed us there uh, and knocked us out of the Champions League, which is a shame. But, you know, we weren't exactly expecting to win it this year, that's for sure. We were just hoping to have a little bit of a crack at it. We've got to this stage, which is more than I expected. Melandowitz knocks it into the midfield. And still we go. There we go. Spurs 3, B67-1. We did get a goal. But the Cristiano hat-trick and the red card for Curtin really did kill us on the night. We weren't good enough. Um, it was always going to be difficult. So we are finally out of the Champions League in front of 57,000 people uh, away at Spurs, which is a shame, but I, I guess we kind of all figured it was going to happen. I think if we just got something in that first leg, the chance was there, but it wasn't to be. We'll have to wait till next year to have another crack at this properly, but we've gone further than I ever would have expected. So next episode, what I'm thinking, we're going to do a bumper, bumper episode because I really do want to push on uh, towards next season. So next episode is going to be the final episode of the season. I'm going to finish off the rest of the league uh, off camera. We're going to do one live com in the next episode because I want to show you transfer time targets and stuff in the episode uh so that will be easier if we do that it will save some time to give us a chance to actually look at stuff and just sort of take in the season i still think we're going to win the league we're eight points clear i think we've got like 10 maybe 11 games to go it should be fine um particularly now that we've got our full strength squad playing pretty much every game now we should be able to see the league out quite comfortably you never know though anyway if you have enjoyed this episode, despite the uh, unceremoniously being shunked out of the Champions League by Spurs, then do drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos every single Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for the final games, or game of the season and see if we won the league and cup or not, maybe. Hey, who knows? I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.